So at this point, life is, it's just a blur. He was in a facility. He was not cooperating. At this point, they were doing no good. So I had to figure out a way to get him out and get him help. I'm not sure if I brought him home or his parents brought him home. Um, I don't remember that. I don't know if I was so numb or if I have buried these emotions and these memories so deep that I don't remember them. If I was in survival mode and I will never remember them, I don't know. But some of the details don't matter. Some of the details I don't remember. Some of the details I may leave out on purpose because this happened over nearly 15 years ago. So there's a lot I don't remember. There's a lot that will be told at another time in another place, but he's home. He is on his knees begging me to listen to him. And I don't listen. I take our son, I head to church. There's so much that happens between the moment he got out and the first birthday of our son. He was arrested. He was accused of so many things because at this time everyone knew he was on drugs. Because if I had a, if I had him committed, then obviously there was a problem. And if there was a crime in this town, we're gonna pin it on him. You know, if these crimes happened at the same time, he did it somehow. So he did he did get a lot of blame. You know, he did things, he didn't do things. But this just started to spiral out of control. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out what do I do. This is my house. This is the only home that my son knows. We had no money. I wasn't working. I wanted to stay home with our son. There was a time where I had to take our water bottle, our water jug that was filled with coins, and I paid our bills with coins. Was, there was a lot of coins, probably $500. So um, our bills weren't much, but when you don't have money, you gotta figure out a way to make it. So I used our jug that we had that was filled with coins and paid our bills and then you know, the next month rolled around and I still needed money. And so I, I pawned this ring ring because I needed money. It's the only thing I had a value. So I pawned that. Of course that didn't make him happy, but he also wasn't doing much to provide for us. So, um, you know, that's just something that happened that God would later restore that I will tell you about later. You know, during this time we lived on the river and everything was flooded. So here I had probably about an eight month old. We were boating in and out. Our house was about 30 feet in the air, as I said previously. And so we were boating in and out and I was, I was just tired. There was just so much going on. There was, it was chaos surrounding me. You know, chaos in my home, chaos outside of my home. And I just, I didn't know what to do. Um, our child's first Christmas. It was, I don't remember much, it was a blur, but I do know that my son's father was not there with us Christmas Eve. He did come over Christmas morning and I was angry. You know, he was, he had taken so much from me. This should be a joyous time. You know, it's my baby's first Christmas, but yet I really couldn't celebrate. I didn't have money to go all out and celebrate. And not that our son knew, you know, he was, he was still a baby, but I knew and it was taken from me. I was robbed of these early memories, you know? And so I was angry and that anger just grew and grew and grew. So somewhere between Christmas and our son's first birthday, I decided that I was gonna go work out west at some hunting seminar. I'm not sure what it was or some, um, I don't even know what you wanna call it. I don't remember what it was, but I was gonna fly out there and my son's father was home that night. He asked where I was going. My son wasn't with us. He was with my parents. I was getting ready to leave. And I would not tell him where I was going. Um, it just, it really, at this point, it wasn't any of his business. He didn't tell me where he was going. I didn't feel I had to tell him where I was going. And that did not sit well with him. So I'm packing, I'm getting ready, and I'm in the kitchen. And I hear a gun cock. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard that. Most of you probably haven't. I mean, but fear paralyzed me. There was nowhere I could go. There were windows everywhere. And at that moment, I thought that was it. 